Listen very carefully and follow my instructions. Prepare your brain for the Cortex Nootropics Podcast. The Mighty Modafinil. Okay, folks, a lot of people have been asking me for this podcast to uh, talk about my thoughts on Modafinil, how Modafinil affects me, whether or not you should take Modafinil every day, uh, what the dosage on Modafinil is, and uh, maybe a little bit of mechanistic explanations about what Modafinil, uh, how Modafinil works, even though the, uh, the the real mechanisms behind Modafinil still remain pretty elusive. Uh, but there's you know a little bit of literature on it right now, and uh, kind of you know my dose recommendations, what you might want to pair it with, what you might want to not pair it with, and uh, a whole bunch of other things about Modafinil. This has been a long time coming. I I've uh, I've only recently, and by recently I mean you know the last year, uh, really got into fussing with modafinil uh, on an experimental basis for me to really fully understand how it works, how it affects me, uh, wh- what the literature says about it, what the side effects might be, what to take it with, what to not take it with, what situations to use it in, uh, and so I've I've come to understand uh, modafinil uh, quite well over the course of that last year, and I want to talk about everything that I've learned. So strap in, folks, because this is the one that you guys have been waiting for. Episode number twelve. Of the Cortex Eutropics podcast, The Mighty Modafinil. I gotta tell you, having been an entrepreneur for six years, I will not go through the rest of my life without taking smart drugs. Aniracetam, paracetam, uridine monophosphate, Alcar, CDP choline. You can always have a better brain. The Cortex Eutropics podcast is about to begin. All right, what is modafinil? Modafinil is an anti-narcolepsy drug. It's a drug that was created to uh, help people that have narcolepsy to stay awake. Narcolepsy is a malfunction of sort of sleep-wake switch, which makes it so that people uh, that have the malfunction uh, randomly go to sleep uh, in the middle of functioning during their day. It, it seems like a very debilitating disease, and, and you know, I mean, there's just no way that you can live a normal life when you are falling asleep at random times during the day. I, I've had uh, the unfortunate experience of dealing with a, a couple pestering health conditions over the course of the last uh, probably about three years that um, I'm working on and, and repairing, and I'm, I'm pretty damn close to fixing the last issue. It's a gastrointestinal issue. And I can tell you that the, the GI issues and, and, and many other chronic health problems and health problems that a lot of folks deal with every day, they really make it hard for you to have quality of life. And, and if there's one thing that uh, really ranks high in the realm of uh, getting in, in the way of, of having good quality life, um, you know, it would definitely be narcolepsy. So scientists concocted a drug that would keep the brain functioning, keep the brain awake um, in those instances when these people's narcolepsy kicks in and their brains try to shut them down and go to sleep. But if you think about, you know, this, this is one of the things that we, we said in the, the the video that we did on a practical, uh, you know, practical position on modafinil or a practical look at modafinil that's on YouTube. You can find it on the Cortex YouTube channel. Um, for somebody that doesn't have narcolepsy, taking modafinil uh, induces a, a pretty profound wakefulness effect. I mean, think about a, a drug designed to keep the brain from going to sleep and therefore promoting wakefulness. In a normal person that doesn't have narcolepsy, or doesn't have fatigue problems, or doesn't have issues staying awake, you know, it, it's going to do what it, it what it intends to do to an impaired brain. That when when they take modafinil, they just feel normal. Uh, to a person's brain that's already functioning normal, uh, something crazy. It, you know, it it will drastically improve a person's capacity to have wakefulness and thus alertness uh, and focus and motivation and verbal fluency and and virtually everything else that comes along with good brain function. Let me just talk about uh, how modafinil affects me. I'm going to talk about dosage. I'm going to talk about uh, you know a bunch of other things like what I suggest you can take it with or, or what you shouldn't take it with. But I just want to talk about the whole experience for me because I think you know folks are really dying to hear about this, especially if you've not taken modafinil before. Uh, let me just start with how nootropics typically affect me. I, you know, I'm super sensitive to nootropics. I have a theory that I, I've got high levels of uh, acetylcholine, you know, that I've always had high levels of acetylcholine, and that, uh, you know, I tend to be on the low end of, of the dopamine scale, dopamine and potentially epinephrine and norepinephrine. I benefited uh, quite some time ago for about six months taking every day uh, some L-tyrosine, 500 to 1,000 milligrams, until I've repleted levels of dopamine um, in my estimation, you know, in my kind of assessment of it, uh, and epinephrine and norepinephrine to the point where I didn't need to take L-tyrosine anymore. Now, to this day, 
I have the type of energy and motivation and alertness and focus uh, that I had been lacking up to that point that I think taking L-tyrosine every day uh, really helped me to fix. So I mean, I'm going into this uh, situation taking modafinil, having optimized my brain uh, from taking L-tyrosine years ago for quite some time, uh, almost seven months, for about six and a half months, uh, and then uh, the last year and a half taking Cortex virtually every day. Cortex is our commercial stack that we sell in the U.S. and Canada and the U.K., uh, it's used by the United States Army uh, personnel. It's used by business people all around the world, uh, people on Wall Street. Really just a stack that's out there killing it. That stack has uridine monophosphate and CDP choline in it. And uridine monophosphate and CDP choline profoundly affect the cholinergic system. They increase acetylcholine. They increase uh, dendrite and axon growth uh, between neurons. And they also, particularly together, combine to form phosphatidylcholine that's like one of the most important ingredients for membrane fluidity overall brain function and it's one of the things that ray kurzweil the futurist said if there's three things that you should be taking you know that you should like sort of take supplements to help combine to form to quote survive to the singularity which is where your consciousness gets downloaded into a computer uh, and, and therefore your consciousness lives and, and you can live forever or do whatever uh it's you know one of those three things is phosphatidylcholine which is what the Cortex stack makes, uh, which is what uridine and CDP make. So I'm trying to get around to saying that I, I took that for so long that my brain is just so optimized from it. I mean, there's some days that I just don't take any nootropics, and I feel like I've taken nootropics. So I'm sensitive to nootropics because I've optimized my cholinergic profile, I've optimized uh, the catecholamine profile in my brain via taking nootropics for such a long time that, you know, for me, lower doses of nootropics are, are actually better, you know, and I, I just respond, you know, kind of crazily to nootropics. I start out with a dose. I mean, the first time I took modafinil, I started out with a 25 milligram. I'm quite sure it's 25 milligrams, right? I'm very low. I like to go low and then and then see kind of how it affects me and then move up from there. And that's what I suggest people do if you're new to modafinil. Start at 25 milligrams, work your way up in 25 milligram increments until you find a place where, you know, you're at your sweet spot. Uh, the first time I took, you know, modafinil, yeah, 25 milligrams. Within about 25 minutes, the onset happened for me. Now, uh, whether it's 25 milligrams or, you know, now I've worked myself up to 75 milligrams, that's the max that I'll go because anymore kind of makes me anxious. This is how it affects me. Within about 25 minutes, uh, I start to feel my brain turning on. It's, uh, it, it's in the beginning, it's kind of like caffeine where I just start to feel you know, more awake and, you know, and I'm like, okay, now we're, now we're ready to go do work. Now we've got the capacity to go crush it. And, uh, I just start to feel energized, but, but something different happens, you know, at around the 25 minute mark, you know, after that initial, it's, it's the initial onset starts at, at really like 15 minutes for me, and then it kind of gradually works its way up. And then at 25 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes, right around that mark, the wakefulness and the control of my brain completely takes off. I mean, I mean, my ability to use, uh, to be aware of, you know, uh, and for its functionality to be uh, amazing, all regions of my brain that I can identify is profoundly increased. I mean, th th this, in, in contrast with other nootropics, it's almost like modafinil does everything. You know, modafinil for me improves verbal recall, it improves mental energy, it makes me motivated to work. Um, you know, it'll get me to sit down and focus on something without break or without fail without pause, without even wanting to pause, like super deeply engaged in, in working on something for hours at a time, three, four, five, six hours at a time. Whereas other nootropic compounds uh, might offer that to a degree. I'd say a close second would be uridine monophosphate. Um, and then Alcar is, eh, yeah, Alcar is probably third for me because Alcar is awesome. Uh, but, you know, other nootropics like the racetams, uh, oxyracetam particularly, aniracetam, they're very individual in their effects. You know, aniracetam is very stimulatory, makes me want to multitask. Oxyracetam is stimulatory, but improves my verbal fluency, gets me functioning well from a sleep deficit, and makes me want to focus. Whereas modafinil does everything. You know, it, ma it makes, makes my brain want to work better in every area and you know it does so in like a profound way so so at, at 30 you know 30 minutes after the onset forget it 
now I, I now I just want to work. Now it's like okay, I, I, it's it's easy to create the to do list. It's easy to think of the things I need to do. I know just what needs to be done. And getting started is, is not even a task. Not only is it not a task to get started, but once I get started, I don't get sidetracked. I'm not like in five different windows. I'm not responding to people's Facebook messages and, and doing anything. I'm doing one thing at a time. I'm deeply engaged in that thing, and I can do it for as long as I need to do it to get it done. I would say to this day. The, you know, we, t- we did a video about this too on uh, a practical look at modafinil on the Cortex YouTube channel. The best application, uh, actually, you know what? We, we talked about this in uh, the video called Which Smart Drugs to Use for Which Applications, which is also on the Cortex YouTube channel, and it's an awesome video. We talk about oxyracetam, uridine, um, we talk about aniracetam, we talk about uh, a couple other cool compounds. Very cool video. But where we, I mentioned there that the, the best use for modafinil for me is if I got a, a lot of work to do, just a giant task, you know, maybe if I'm like, say I was a college student and I had to write a, a long essay, you know, or say like I'm going to edit a video for, you know, I started a, a video series called Entrepreneur or Die, where we talk about entrepreneurship, my experience in entrepreneurship, you know, and a bunch of other things. And those video, those are videos that I do that take a long time to edit. So if I've got to edit one of those videos, or two of them, or three of them, or edit a different video. I'm always putting content out, and that's going to take me six hours, or five hours, or four hours. You know, I'm going to do something that takes eight hours, and I haven't started yet, and I've got nothing done, and I'm on a deadline. That is the best application for modafinil for me. You know, I'll take uh, 50 milligrams, 75, 50 to 75 milligrams is my sweet spot, and I'm perfectly okay with taking 50 milligrams and just get to work. You know, I'm I'm in, I'm zoned in. I am focused, you know, I'm, I'm included, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not distracted, uh, everything works perfectly, you know, I'm alert, I know what I want to do, I know how I want to do it, and I get to it. So that, that's how modafinil affects me, you know, the, the profound wakefulness and the profound control I have over all faculties of my brain, and the feeling that, I mean, that my brain is totally turned on in a way that no other compound can really match. Again, uridine monophosphate with the right compounds, the compounds in the cortex stack, um, and even just uridine by itself with some caffeine, you know, that's a close second. But but modafinil turns the brain on in a way that, that really nothing can equally compare to. And it's really, really something else. Okay, now let's talk about what you, uh, you know, what what you should take in relation to modafinil, what you, what you shouldn't take in relation to modafinil. Here's here's been my experience, and I think this is going to apply to a lot of other people, and it uh, it mirrors the anecdotal reports out there on the web. Uh, number one, modafinil, uh, unlike a lot of these other compounds like some of the racetams, you don't really need to take with anything else. And and by you don't need to take it by anything else, I actually mean you don't even need to drink coffee when you take modafinil. You know, for most people, and it depends on your tolerance and a bunch of other things, neurotransmitter functionality, a bunch of other stuff. But for me, uh, a quarter of a cup or half a cup or a regular 12-ounce iced coffee is enough. And I don't even have to drink coffee. I just want to drink the coffee so that I don't induce uh, a withdrawal on the adenosine receptors in my brain and, and, and go through any type of caffeine withdrawal. So I'll, I'll have caffeine on days when I take modafinil, on, on, the, on the days when I've experimented with modafinil just so I don't run into that problem. But you don't have to. Uh, I wouldn't suggest taking any more than know, 100, 120 milligrams of caffeine or a regular cup of coffee um, if you're going to take modafinil because you might run into anxiety. I mean, that's one of the side effects widely reported from taking modafinil because it could overstimulate you. I mean, that, that that's what it does. Uh, so I would say, uh, be mindful of your caffeine intake. You know, drink just enough uh, so that you don't, you know, you don't think you're going to start running into a, a caffeine withdrawal eventually throughout the day or later on that day and inducing some sort of headache or something or fatigue. And if you're worried, you know, I've said this before on other podcasts. If, if you're worried about that at all, if you're worried about getting anxious from from being overstimulated, just just drink a few sips of coffee so you can stave off the the uh, decline the, the what you call it, the withdrawal the caffeine withdrawal um, and you can uh, you know and you won't run into you know excess stimulatory effects from taking both caffeine and modafinil going back to the idea that it, it's unlike any other nootropic in that you don't need to take it with anything else you, you don't need to stack it with a racetam you don't need to stack it with a coin source you don't need to stack it with tyrosine you know you don't need to stack it with anything it is sufficient in improving brain performance and getting you to double or or triple uh, your productive output. The one thing that I would say, though, is that uh, because for some people, and, and for me included, 
past 75 milligrams, modafinil causes an anxiety response. You know, it, it, it'll it'll do that. And 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 coming a little bit to the mechanisms, at least the ones we know, it it, it uh, prevents the brain. Uh, from releasing GABA. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It actually stops GABA release in certain regions of the brain and increases glutamate in other regions of the brain. So glutamate is very excitatory, uh, neurotransmitter responsible for a whole bunch of things. Um, and GABA is an inhibitory transmitter, which sort of suppresses the excitatory nature, the excessive neuronal firing nature of, of, of sort of the rest of your brain. So when that happens uh, for some people, especially if they're drinking a lot of coffee, that's why I warn against it, um, that that could trigger a sort of anxiety response in people that are prone to it and, and even maybe normal people. So the, the only thing that I would say uh, to potentially stack modafinil with if you absolutely need to and if you run into a place where you're feeling a little edgy would be theanine, L-theanine. It's an amino acid. It improves the alpha brainwave function, makes you feel a lot more calmer. And uh, it is one of the states that you get into, um, and you know this is measured by uh, electrical activity in the brain um, when you meditate. So theanine in probably about four or five instances when I've taken modafinil, which by the way at this point has only been ten times. You know the, over the course of last year, I've taken modaf- modafinil exactly ten times, and four or five of those times, um, I felt like I was getting a little edgy. And that uh, you know maybe some theanine would help, and and 500 milligrams of theanine totally took me down to earth and into a better place. So if you run into that where you're a little edgy, and you're just excessively stimulated from taking modafinil, uh, have some L-theanine around. It's a it's a natural amino acid, L-theanine. Uh, you know it's been very well studied. There are very very minimal. Uh, minimally reported side effects, if any, you can uh, find it in green tea, and it's you know it's extremely safe to take. So I would consider uh, taking theanine if you run into that situation. Let's talk about uh, f- usage, you know, sort of frequency of usage of modafinil. Uh, there are proponents of modafinil out there that have talked about using it for quite some time. Uh, the guy from Bulletproof, uh, the whole line of products that makes performance optimization products ranging from coffee into I think they used to sell nootropics um, I think now they're pushing Siltep and some other stuff and uh, you know Dave Asprey is like a proponent for high fat diets and stuff like that which I totally disagree with for a variety of reasons but uh, the one thing that um, uh, but, uh, you know that Dave Asprey and the whole kind of bulletproof brand highlights is the usage of modafinil and you know he, he took modafinil for eight years or so and I don't know if he had side effects I've been trying to work with him asking him questions on Facebook about exactly what the dosage was was if he ran into side effects and other uh, sort of you know granularity about it, but I've not got him to to actually elucidate on on any of that stuff. So so who knows? There aren't many other examples though of people that have taken modafinil every day, and there is a study uh, both on modafinil and a dorafinil. You can find this on uh, on a dorafinil on the examine.com page or on a dorafinil uh, that that facial muscle spasms resulted in some rodents from taking uh, you know daily a drafinil for I think it was like nine months or so uh, and that they were able to reverse um, by uh, I think it was a dopamine antagonist or something it basically indicated that there was a malfunction in dopamine as a result of taking a drafinil and uh, I think this is extrapolatable to modafinil this is from everyday usage so I definitely don't suggest taking modafinil every day you know you want to have an optimized baseline to the point where you don't need nootropics at all you know and i mean depending on where you are in your and your sort of time experimenting with them you know i'm seven years in so i need them far less today than i needed them seven years ago you know after i fought in the iraq war and you know had a damaged brain and wasn't functioning well and didn't eat well and all the rest of that stuff um so you know i mean your your mileage is, is certainly going to vary but Taking modafinil every day and and having that be like coffee, where it's part of your daily routine, is not something I suggest doing. We we don't have any studies on long term modafinil. We don't know how safe it is. We don't know if it's going to affect your negative. In fact, we've got you know evidence to support the opposite. You know that you might run into muscle spasms. There's a lot of anecdotal re- reports out there. People running into neck spasms, back spasms, otherwise muscle spasms, having anxiety attacks, etc. From continued usage of modafinil now there's other people out there that take modafinil continually maybe they cycle a little bit but they take it one years two years three years and report that they're fine so it's all going to depend on you but my personal suggestion seven years into taking nootropics and a year into fussing with modafinil is don't take it every day and don't take it frequently at all use it like i said in 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 an instance where you've got a lot of work to do you haven't started yet you got a deadline and you got to crank stuff out where can you get modafinil so Modafinil is a prescription-only drug. So if you've got narcolepsy, you can get modafinil prescribed to you. 
if uh, if you have sleep apnea, which is a disorder where you have frequent pauses in your breathing when you sleep, and that uh, fusses with your sleep and gives you cognitive impairment and tiredness the next day, uh, or you've got chronic fatigue, which is uh, you know it's related to a bunch of other underlying problems, potentially the Epstein Barr virus, which causes mono, then your doctor might prescribe you modafinil. The most reputable site that folks have gotten modafinil from uh, to experiment with in the past called Modafinil Cat is no longer selling modafinil. Uh, so I would say, you know, if, if you're looking to experiment with that modafinil, you think it might help you in a performance uh, enhancement uh, arena, uh, then probably the best place to start would be uh, the Nootropics subreddit on Reddit, so r slash Nootropics, Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash Nootropics, um, and then go to Facebook and uh, into the, in the search box, t- just type in the word Nootropics and or Nootropics groups, and you'll find a bunch of different groups with uh, members ranging from 2,000 to 20,000. Uh, people in it that that are a collection of people that have been taking nootropics for quite some time that discuss this kind of stuff where you can find sources, legitimate sources, safe sources, proven sources. There's even vendors within you know those groups of people that uh, have degrees of legitimacy and, and you know and folks regard as uh, you know as safe spots to to get modafinil from. That that's where I would go if, if if you're interested in experimenting with it. But my you know, I mean I, I have to we, we play everything by the rules here. Uh, Cortex R stack is made in a uh, uh, current good manufacturing practices facility in New York, farming down New York, uh, that uh, operates under all of the sort of mandates and, and legal criteria handed down by the uh, by the FDA. And so, you know, we play as by the books as possible. So, I, you know, I want to keep this podcast in line with that. It's not that I don't want to just sort of go out of the rules because I think a lot of the restrictions on on certain compounds are quite ridiculous. But it, it is what it is right now, and that's essentially all I can say about it. So experiment wisely, uh, you know, get yourself into those forums if you're really curious about getting your hands on modafinil, uh, and then go from there. Overall, my summary on modafinil is that, like I said, it's useful if you've got a whole lot of stuff to do, you haven't started, and you need to get stuff done. And, and you know, you're on a deadline, and you just are going to sit down for 12 hours or 8 hours or a long time and get that work done. And no other nootropics are cutting it for you. You know, honestly, I would try to uh, find good nootropic stacks and optimize your baseline and make yourself function well so that you don't have to take modafinil because again you don't want to take it every day you don't want to take it a lot you know i suggest sort of taking it you're breaking it out when you need it over the course of the last year me really getting into modafinil and studying it and seeing how it affects me and experimenting i've taken it a total of 10 times you know and, and that's how i that's how i think it should be used i mean you could use it a lot you know a lot more than that you could use it twice a week three times a week It's all really going to depend on your brain, but I like to cycle nootropics. Again, these days I need far less nootropics to get a good functioning brain out of myself. So some days I drink, you know, two, three iced coffees, and I'm like ready to go. So, uh, so you know, it's all going to depend on your brain. Uh, but I, I think it is a very uh, just like everything else. It, it's a useful compound to have in the arsenal when you need to break it out to get that extra profound wakefulness uh, out of your brain. And, you know, if you want to triple and quadruple your productive output, you know, this is probably the most significant uh, thing about modafinil. Then then modafinil is going to be probably the best nootropic compound uh, besides uridine monophosphate and CDP choline as a combo uh, and some caffeine that, that you could find. And it's different for different people. Some people take phenylparacetam and get the same effect. Some people... You know, mix new pept with aniracetam with you know like a choline source and get the same effect. It's all really going to depend on you. But suffice it to say that modafinil is extremely powerful. Um, you know, you should work your way up from 25 milligram uh, doses and then work yourself up in 25 milligram increments to find your sweet spot. Uh, and that it's something that you should just you should keep in the arsenal to use when you need it, but not rely on it whatsoever. If you have not tried the Cortex Nootropic Stack, that is our commercial stack that we made combining uridine monophosphate and CDP choline for a nootropic experience that people are calling the only pre-made stack that works. I tried everything. You know, I've been taking nootropics for a long time, and the the stack that most resonated with me or worked well for me was the first iteration of the Alpha Brain Stack. This was like four years ago. 
until they changed the formula. They changed the formula, and it's you know it's kind of different now. But the first stack was was good for me, and I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And that was one of the things that got me into the idea of creating a, a pre-made stack. But I tried all the rest of the other stacks out there, and some of them were good. Some of them really didn't affect me at all. And I know that's different based on different brains. I'm not I'm not you know trying to be negative about anyone's stack out there because I'm sure they put a lot of work into it, and I'm sure there's science behind it, and I'm sure it works for a lot of people. But I wanted to make a stack. We wanted to make a stack at, at Surrogate Labs, the company that makes the Cortex product, that most people feel, that people actually notice the subjective benefit from, that lasts a long time and gets people's cognitive functions noticeably better. And that's what we did with creating Cortex. Uridine monophosphate, uh, you know, if you go research it and Google it and just, just go see for yourself you know, what people's experiences are uh, and then go read about the Mr. Happy Stack, which is kind of what Cortex is a variant of where you combine uridine and a choline source uh, and fish oil and B-complex. And I, it's just one of the most powerful compounds I've ever come across for inducing great brain function, verbal recall, motivation, the capacity and the inclination to sit down and want to do work. I mean, it's like it turns the brain on in every imaginable way. I mean, that's why I always say, that's what I've been saying throughout this podcast, it's a close second to um, a daffodil. So snag a bottle of the Cortex Nootropic stack, uh, our stack that we built, our commercial stack at livecortex.com. I think you're going to love it. Um, otherwise, guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to this podcast if you're listening to this on iTunes. Thanks so much for supporting everybody. A lot of people have been subscribing to both the, the uh, podcast and the YouTube channel, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate everybody commenting on all the uh, all the videos that we put out on YouTube. That's epic, man. I mean, nothing. There's nothing more that I could ask for. There's nothing more that I wanted when I decided to start creating content about nootropics than to interact with the nootropics community in a friendly way to talk about this stuff so we can all continue learning, you know, continue taking all these awesome compounds and ultimately to help us achieve the thing that you know, I'm taking nootropics for and I hope a lot of other people are, which is to optimize the brain acutely, to optimize the brain long-term and to stave off neurodegeneration. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. And hey, we'll talk to you next time. Pick up a bottle of the Cortex Nootropic at www.livecortex.com.